so my goal here is to make some sort of plant shelf that I can put in these fixed window spaces here. And I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. And I've seen plant shelves that people simply just take and they put on the outside of the windows like this and put a bracket underneath and let them sit like that. But I don't really like that. I don't think it looks good and I think it sticks too far out. Someone might bump into it. Just not something I'm into. So what I really want to do is try to match my window stool and apron look as best I can to get something that looks halfway decent and at the same time can hold some plants. and It'll be nice and recessed in here. So my first thought was to just go ahead and kind of duplicate this and just take one of these shelves, make another shelf just like that, put it there. And, and that could work well and I'd basically make one per window. But what I think I'm gonna try to do is make one long shelf that spans this whole window and is connected. And then what I'll do for the aprons is I'll actually do a wraparound trim, somewhat matching this here to make a nice finished look. So the very first thing I need to do is run to the store and get some appropriate wood, and then I'll get going. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna match the length of my new window shelf to the total length of my window stools here. And that's 91 inches. So now that I know the measurement of my shelf, I'm gonna cut it to length and I'm gonna use a chop saw to do that. Or you could use a handheld saw as well. I got a chop saw, so I'm gonna use it. So now that this is cut to length, I could go ahead and just leave it a square edge like this and make the shelf that way. However, I want to match the window stool and apron as best I can in the existing windows. And so what I'm going to do is route a 45 degree angle on the edge of the board here. And I'm going to do that using a router table and a 45 degree bit. And I'm going to do this in a couple passes because the big bit is going to take out a lot of wood and I don't wanna take all that wood out at once. It'd probably be problematic, so I'm gonna do two passes to get what I need. First pass at a lower depth, and the second pass, I'll have the depth of the full bit ready to go. Let's rock and roll. So the router went ahead and gave me my nice 45 degree angle here, but it's still a little rough. So what I'm going to do now is take a sanding block and sand it to a nice smooth finish. So I guess my next step is to figure out the height of the new shelf. And I think all I'm gonna do here, keep it simple, I'm gonna cut this space in half and run my shelf that way. So to do that, real simple, I'm gonna use painter's tape so I don't have to mark the wall. Piece here, and then I'm gonna put another piece here just in case. And then I'm gonna take my measurement, 46 and a half, so we're gonna be about 23 and a quarter, right here. And that is the middle of this space. And that is going to be about where the new shelf is gonna go. Good starting point. So I'm gonna have this one shelf that goes all the way across, but it's gonna have something to sit on. So what I'm gonna do is make cleats or brackets, if you will, on the ends here, gonna be like an L. So I have a piece of trim coming out of here and a little piece over here, and that will be something the shelf can sit on. So I'm gonna figure out those dimensions right now. It's about four inches deep, and then I'm only gonna come out about an inch and a half out, and then on this side, it's gonna be a little bit different. I will go same thing, again, it's about four inches deep, but I'm gonna have a trim wraparound all the way around. This side is going to serve as the main shelf structure, and this piece as well will be primarily decorative, but it'll also provide some additional support 
for the shelf. So that's a good thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this cleat first and we're gonna do that in the garage. Here's one that's complete already. Now to do this, what I did was I took a piece of one by four. I went ahead and cut a 45 degree angle in it at a length much longer than needed. And then I went ahead and I cut another piece at a length much longer than needed. Now I had two pieces with a 45 and I could take those two pieces and make a 90 degree joint, glued the joint together and tacked it with a couple finished nails. That seemed to be the best method to ensure I got a proper 90 degree joint. So now that I've got my 90 made, I can go ahead and use the router to route my 45 degree angle. Now, if you didn't wanna do all that, you could just as easily go to one of the home centers and get a piece of trim that's already made up and then you don't have to use the routing table. You can just go ahead and cut your joints and make your angles that way. So another option there. But in my case, I gotta use the router table because I gotta match what I have in the room already. Now that we got the angles, we can go ahead and cut this thing to length with the chop saw. Now that we got to cut the sides, we just have to do one more pass over the router table to get this edge nice and finished and we're good to go. 